talk about the BBC now. Is £159.50 per year for your TV licence value for money? Do you think it's worth it? BBC keep telling us, oh, yeah, it's the best deal in the world, best deal in the world. More and more people saying, well, I prefer Netflix, much better deal. Uh, so uh, whatever you think about the licence fee, I think we are at a crossroads that the state broadcaster may have to consider different business models in the future rather than us, the viewers, handing them effectively three and a half billion quid once a year. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen for much longer. But let's talk about this. This is what we call the four o'clock fury session. So I don't suppose we're going to be that furious. I want to talk seriously uh, about this with a sociologist and cultural critic, a professor of sociology at Aston University, Professor Ellis Cashmore. Uh, good afternoon, Ellis. Good afternoon, Kevin. Uh, we're at a, it's an interesting moment in the BBC's history. Right now, the Director General, uh, Tim Davey, is in Parliament answering questions about mm. the business model, about the licence fee, and, of course, he's being pressed about the latest of the BBC's scandals or furores surrounding Hugh Edwards last week. So yeah. what I would say to you, what I would like to ask you is... The BBC does seem to have devolved down into some sort of massive organisation that just staggers from one crisis of its own making to the next, to another. So we've had, of course, Martin Bashir, Jimmy Savile, uh, we had the, the Hugh Edwards funeral last week, and I think more and more people are saying, I I'm not sure this is worth £159.50 uh, of my money once a year. Uh, do you think that it is time for the BBC to think about a different model, a different way of funding itself? I think it's probably been thinking of a different model, or trying to think of a different model for the past 20 years, Kevin. Uh, you might as well add Tim Westwood to that litany of scandals as well. So the BBC is in a state of perpetual scandal, and there's not going to be an end to this everlasting crisis. It'll just go on and on until they do find an alternative. Let's reflect back, though, on the BBC. On the positive side, mm -hmm. this is the best known broadcaster in the world, bar none. It commands so much prestige and authority. Everywhere you go in the world, you mention BBC, it opens doors for you. So it has got a brand, an unmatchable brand, you might say, globally. Um, what does it do well? Fantastic dramas that are the envy of the world, documentaries that are path blazing. Um, it's, it's got a well-earned reputation, but on the negative side, this is an institution, a, a, a creation of an earlier age. Yes. In the 1940, late 1940s, early 1950s, when BBC television was finding its feet, it was an alternative to the US model of television, which was basically uh, a, a contrivance for selling stuff. It was just an advertising medium back in, in the US. Uh, BBC wanted to do something different. It wanted to educate us, to instruct us, morally to uplift us in a way. And it's done that. But of course, the cultural landscape and technological landscape for that matter has changed radically, particularly over the past few years. Not only do they face competition from commercial broadcasters, but also the streamers have made their intentions clear. They want to put all other rivals, and they see their rivals not only in television but in the cinema, out of business. So BBC has to do something. It's now in a, a competition, a forced competition, where it has really no weapons to fight back besides, as you pointed out earlier, the licence fee. Yes, and uh, you talked earlier of the vision of the BBC. It also yeah. almost brings a tear to the eye because, you know, those uh, lofty ideals seem to have disappeared in the mists of time. And the BBC, or, or, it does still make some great programmes. I would also maintain yeah. it makes a lot of rubbish as well. Uh, well uh, but that, uh, um, but uh, it, it, its lofty ideals seem to have uh, devolved into a sort of constant battle to survive. Now... The the Times wrote today about the unsustainable licence fee model. So yeah. can we talk about potential okay. alternatives? I mean, obviously, the obvious one is advertising. 
Uh, another one well, would be subscription. Subs is the obvious one, Kevin. In a, in a sense, that's the one yeah, that's on. most suggested. Yeah. I don't think that would fly, not because people are too mean or because of the cost of living. I was thinking, back of the envelope calculations earlier today, I was wondering how much it would cost me to watch every Premier League game live. And of course, now it's split amongst three providers yeah. and it had set me back £800. That's just for football. Right. So... I, I don't think there is that much of a resistance to subscriptions per se. But, of course, people are habituated to BBC and they probably will resent that. And when it's voluntary, of course, when you have the choice, do you want BBC? If so, you're going to have to pay, I don't know, four, five hundred quid a year for it. People would think twice about it at the moment. It's painlessly, well, I won't say painlessly, but it's it's extracted from us via the license fee. So I don't think the subscription model is the way to go. Advertising, you mentioned earlier, yep. there would again be resistance to it because of the impartiality. And people would say, well, BBC is just another commercial network now. Well, it has somehow to distinguish itself from the likes of ITV and all the, the other commercial providers that show advertising somehow it has to create a way of advertising without rubbing our noses in it in other yeah. words i don't think it could show commercials in the same way as other sponsoring commercials. programs perhaps something like that product place but you know the way the movies do it quite subtly in a way that you notice brands without it really jarring with you you know it doesn't kind of disturb the narrative or annoy you they're just there on the screen. So maybe BBC, I mean, the brains that they have, there is nobody's business. So I'm sure that, that it's not beyond them to come up with a way of integrating commercial messages in the programmes. I, I think sponsorship is a little bit crass, so they'll have to try and avoid that. But here's the point, Kevin. They are going to have to choose one or the other. I don't think they'll go for subscriptions. And if they can't survive on the license fee, and it looks like they can't, at least not for the, the next 10 or 20 years, they're going to have to tolerate some form of advertising. Perhaps not in the advertising, not perhaps not advertising as we understand it uh, today, but in, in, in a way that won't upset us. What about uh, systemically at the BBC, at the state broadcaster? I mean, it does seem to yeah. me that what it could do with is a real root and branch reorganisation, a real look at it. You know, the number of uh, sort well, of middle managers earning yeah. more than 100,000 per year is kind of grotesque. I mean, too many people doing non-jobs are getting too much money, uh, too much of a bigger slice of the uh, licence fee. Uh, well, you say that, Kevin, but BBC would retaliate and say, hang on, we're not... Do you want to make us into the pauper of the broadcasting world? This is the most powerful brand in the world, and we can't escape that. And they don't want to. But you I get mean, but, 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 great things. But they, you're going to say, well, do we, should we pay... The, uh, our star broadcasters less than commercial? Uh, no, 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 I wouldn't say that. I, I'm not so uh, concerned about the broadcasters themselves, although I do okay. th I do think that the BBC, when it says we have to pay Gary Lineker 1.3 million <laughs> yeah, well, because he'd get, the, he'd get much more on another channel, that's just not who true. Cares? Uh, yeah, who cares, yeah. But what I would say is they pay too much money to too many yeah. middle managers with sort of stupid-sounding jobs like director of vision, and you don't well, even know what yeah, these jobs... I'd add to that. Yeah. I'd let, let me add to that, Kevin. Yeah. I think that they pay too much money for sporting events as well. Yeah. I think, you know, the heyday when they could sort of poach sporting events and put them on uh, for the cheap, on, on the cheap are gone. You know, sports are expensive. Yes, yes. Now, I was noticing the, the, the Wimbledon figures for the, the men's final. They, they touched 11.5 million. Yeah. That's serious. Yeah. So, I mean, Tell me about it, Ellis. I was, I was, I was on air that. at the time, at the same time, uh, competing yeah. with. Uh, you it's know, ridiculous. Uh, when, when I didn't we do have, very well. Put it that football. way. <laughs> yeah, and, and when we have ITV and BBC showing the same game at the same time, that is absurd. So I think BBC has to face quite a hard decision soon mm. and say, should we be broadcasting live sport? Okay, match of the day is popular, but that really isn't live sport. We, we've got used to watching stuff live nowadays. Mm -hmm. 
has BBC, has it got to the point where BBC has got to think, well, we'll hand over to the, the baton to the likes of the commercial providers. They can do the job as well as we can and they can afford it. Effectively, the, effectively then, on. Ellis, what you're saying is uh, they should look carefully at how they spend their money. Uh, in Precisely. other words, don't go in competing, trying to get massive sporting tournaments. They have to do what they do uniquely well. Yeah, the, the documentaries the, the, the and the commercial dramas. networks can't do. And that's a shrinking area. They do documentaries, fantastic. They also produce world-class drama, which they can then sell on through BBC Studio. I mean, they can earn money from their, their high-class dramas. Um, and really think to themselves, do we do sport that well? Well, yeah, we're pretty good at it, but our competitors are also quite good now. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to let sport go. I know a lot of our viewers right now are screaming at their screens and saying, BBC drop sport never. But I'm afraid it will have to face that decision. I, th I think you're right. And there's no doubt whatsoever that this is uh, the crossroads of the history of the BBC. Uh, great to talk to you, Ellis. Let's talk again soon. That's uh, Professor Ellis Cashmore. He is a sociologist and cultural critic, professor of sociology at Aston University.